Okay, now next let's look near x equals 2. All right, the theorem tells us we have a vertical asymptote there. Uh, let's see what's going on. So once again, I can get close to 2 from two ways. I can come in to 2 from the left, so 2 minus a little bit. So I'm thinking of numbers like 1.9, 1.99, etc. And if I plug in, say, 1.99, let's see what we get. Now, the, the numerator is never really going to be the issue. It's always what's going on in the denominator. So in, in the numerator, I'm plugging in something really close to 2. If I plug in something really close to 2 and square, I get something really close to 4. Multiply that by 2, I get something that's really close to 8. Minus something that's really close to 2, minus 3. So the closer I get to 2 here, the closer this is to 8, the closer that is to 2. So this, the closer this gets to 8 minus 2 minus 3, 6 minus 3 is 3. So the numerator is really close to 3. Let's look in the denominator. I plug in 1.99, something really close to 2 and square it, minus 4, I'm getting something really close to 0. And we want to know qualitatively uh, what kind of number that is. Is it a positive or negative? Is it a big number or small number. <clears throat> so if I take something just a little bit less than 2 and square it, I'm going to get something a little bit less than 4, which means this difference is going to be a negative number. And the closer I get to 2, the smaller that number is going to be. So we, that's going to be considered what we call a small negative. Okay, so if I take 3 and divide it by a small negative, what kind of number am I getting out there? Well, uh, we're going to be getting a negative number because we have a positive 3 over a negative number. And in absolute value, this number is going to be big. All right, so we're going to be getting on a big negative. The closer x gets to 2, the smaller the denominator becomes. So the bigger in absolute value the quotient becomes. And so we would say as x goes to 2 from the left, the f of x is going to negative infinity. So not only do we know that we're getting a vertical asymptote there, we're also getting information about the graph. So in the graph, when x equals 2, I've got a vertical asymptote. Theorem 4.1, and excuse me, theorem, the theorem from section 4.1 told us that. But this tells us, as we sneak up to 2 from this side, the y values get very large and negative, and so we're going to be heading down that way. So we know what's happening then near the asymptote. All right, so we're still looking near x equals 2. Now I can come in from the other side. x approaches 2 from the right-hand side. So I'm thinking of plugging in numbers 2 plus a little bit, say 2.1, 2.01, etc., and so if I plug something like that into the function, well, if I look at the numerator, this is still getting close to 8. That's still getting close to 2. So 8 minus 2 minus 3. That's, the top is still getting close to 3. And tell me about what's going on on the bottom now. Well, 2.01 is a little bit bigger than 2. So when I square it, I'm getting something a little bit bigger than 4. So uh, this is going to be a very small positive number. And so if I take 3 divided by a very small positive number, the result's going to be a very big positive number. The closer my input gets to 2, the closer the top gets to 3, and the smaller and uh, the, the bottom gets, which means the bigger the quotient gets. So we would say, as x goes to 2 from the right, the f of x is heading towards positive infinity. And so once again, this is just reaffirming the fact that we have a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. But this tells us, as I come into 2 from the right-hand side, 
the function values are very large positive numbers, so I'm going to be approaching the asymptote uh, from that side. So we know there's a vertical asymptote at 2. This detailed analysis confirms that, but it also gives us an indication of the behavior near the asymptote. Okay, the last point to analyze around is x equals negative 2. And so we can come into negative 2 from the left-hand side and plug in numbers minus 2 minus a little bit, say minus 2.1, minus 2.01, etc. If I take one of those numbers and plug it into the function, See what happens here. So I'm plugging in something really close to negative 2. So this squared would be really close to 4 multiplied by 2. That's getting really close to 8 minus something close to negative 2. So that's going to be close to adding 2 minus 3. So I have 8 plus 2 minus 3 it gives me a positive 7. So the numerator is really close to positive 7. What about the denominator? Well, so when I square this, since I'm plugging in something negative uh, 2.01, when I square it, I'm going to get something a little bit bigger than 4. So when I subtract 4, I'm going to get a very small positive number. The closer I get to negative 2, the closer the top gets to 7, the smaller the bottom gets. Okay, so this result is going to be a very big positive. And so we write as x goes to negative 2 from the left, f of x is going to infinity. And so what does that mean geometrically? So on the graph, we confirm that we're getting a vertical asymptote at negative 2. I'm coming in from the left, so I'm coming in this way on the x-axis. The function values, or the y values, are heading up. So that's the behavior near the asymptote. All right, let's look at what's happening on the other side of negative 2. So x approaches negative 2 from the right-hand side. So we're thinking negative 2 plus a little bit. So we're plugging in stuff like negative 1.9, negative 1.99, etc. So I plug that into my function. And let's see what happens in the numerator. This is still getting close to 4, so that's still getting close to 8. That's still getting close to adding 2 minus 3, so the numerator is still getting close to 7. What about the denominator now? Well, when I take this number and square it, I'm getting something a little bit less than 4. So when I subtract 4, I'm getting a very small negative number. And the closer this number is to negative 2, the closer the numerator is to 7, and the smaller the denominator gets. And so we get something in absolute value, which is very big, uh, but it's a negative. And so we would say, as x goes to negative 2 from the right, the f of x is going to negative infinity. And so what does that mean geometrically? Over here at negative 2, as I come in this way and plug in numbers like negative 1.9, negative 1.99, I'm getting very large in absolute value, but negative numbers. So I'm heading down that way, which gives me that behavior on the right-hand side of that asymptote.